3. This introduction into the Retivis RT3 and TYT MD380 programming software. So we've already talked about digital contacts and we're now moving on to the digital RX group list. Now you see in this code plug that we're using as our example, we have three that are set up. Now, realistically, you're probably only ever gonna to need to have three, but let's explain what the digital receive group list is all about. This allows you to be able to set up a situation where if you are sat listening to people talking on, let's say, talk group 810, the radio will actually, t um, will actually be monitoring all those different talk groups all at the same time. So let's say, for example, there's nobody talking on uh, Phoenix slot number two, which is the name of this talk group, and uh, somebody your radio is set to 810 but somebody starts talking on talk group uh, let's say 860. If your radio is set up to receive on talk group 860 then your radio will suddenly kick into life and you will hear the conversation on talk group 860 even though the channel that you're using is talk group 810 so your radio is still selected to 810 but because only one transmission can go through a radio at any one time it's working on the principle that it's giving you and telling you where the conversation is currently happening so it's perfectly normal to be sitting there you're listening on one channel and all of a sudden you're hearing another channel but it's telling you that's because the conversation is now happening on a different channel now with uh, a lot of talk groups, especially where we're talking in slot two, most of them are user activated anyway. So if somebody was transmitting on 860 and we're down here in the southwest of the UK, the chances are it's because somebody down in the southwest has activated that talk group. Now that activating a talk group just simply means they've keyed up on that talk group to turn it on. So if they've turned that talk group on and you can now hear it, the chances are there is somebody on that talk group in the Southwest region uh, that is, that's actively using it. And you might want to join in with them uh, and go to that talk group. So this is why we use receive lists. This is different to scanning. Scanning uh, would only let you hear one channel at a time. This will let you hear whichever channel is actually transmitting. And that's, that's the subtle difference. Uh, so slot number one uh, is very similar, uh, but of course this will only show you the, uh, the the talk groups that we use on slot number one on the Phoenix network. So again, if we were sat monitoring on talk group 235, but actually somebody uh, started calling out uh, secure or whatever on talk group one, uh, you would hear it if nobody was using 235. It would come through your radio and on the display it would, it, it would tell you that uh, this transmission is coming through talk group one. Now, depending on your radio, and different radios do vary, uh, some radios, uh, if you key up quickly enough after they're over, uh, even though you're, you're set to talk group 235, some radios like the Hytera radio will actually allow you to key up, and even though you're on talk group 235, you respond on talk group 1, which is very, very useful. Some radios do that, which is very, very good. Uh, can get a little bit confusing at times and apologies if you you're finding that a bit mind-blowing so hopefully it will all become clear as we go through what you might find useful if as we go through the channel information uh, if everything starts to become a little bit clearer when it comes to channels come back to this uh, section on the digital rx group list and hopefully this will then start to make sense for you now the zone information is the way we make it nice and easy on the radio to find the channels. So we can zone or group together uh, channels into groups of 16. So for that reason, we tend to use the convention that we use one zone per repeater and we'll use the most common uh, talk groups for that region in that zone. So you'll see there, uh, we've actually set up a repeater group, a repeater zone for GB7KM. And then we've got our most common talk groups showing there that we're going to be using. Now, if you've had one of these cards given to you um, for GB7KM, this is giving you those talk groups. And the reason they're not in numerical order or alphabetical order is because those that are uh, slanted in italics these are user activated talk groups okay so what that means is if I was calling uh, for 
you know, calling on, on talk group one or calling on talk group two and somebody came back to me, it would be appropriate to QSY to change channel, to move off the calling channel. And the most appropriate channels for one, if you're on one or two, would be to go to 119 or 129. And those channels exist worldwide. So no matter who you're speaking to, unless they haven't got them programmed into their radio, which they should have, 119 and 129 are user activated channels that we, you can QSY to. If you're on 013, which is also a worldwide calling channel, but for English language users only, then you would QSY to 113 or 123, which are user activated channels, but only for the English language. 235 is the UK wide calling channel. So this is not available in any other country. 235 can only be accessed in the UK and you would then QSY to 80 or 81 then these are all on slot one okay so all these talk groups are available on slot one and then on slot two there are lots of different talk groups available but the most common ones that you're probably going to be using is just nine which is the local talk group so that's just local traffic on that local repeater or talk group 810 which is the whole of the southwest region so that's uh, the western supermare swindon the kemble gb7 km repeater uh, southampton repeater the reading repeater all linked together into one region so the southwest region all linked together under talk group 810 they're the they're the channels that we recommend and as gb7 km they're the channels that we recommend you program up into your radio obviously if you do a lot of traveling into other regions you might want to just add a couple of other regions in there but if you're predominantly staying in the southwest region you're probably going to be fine with those so going back to our screen again just making sure that that's clear so you can see that we've got uh, the order that we use in the zone we try and keep consistent with that theory because it makes it easier to remember when you're looking at the radio. You know, you if you're talking to somebody on two, you can quickly flick down one, see that it's 119 so that you can then tell the person you're talking to, should we QS, QSY to talk group 119, rather than having to try and remember what all the names are. Now, they look a little bit random. They look like I'm like somebody's just thrown a load of letters at uh, at the keyboard. Unfortunately, you've only got 16 characters in which you can type all these names in. Uh, and it's quite important to to get the number in there and to get the repeater name in, in the channel name because uh, you, well, it'll become very obvious very shortly. So this is what the zones are all about. And again, we'll come back to this once we've done the channel section. Scan list we're going to ignore just for a moment and move straight on to channel information and you'll see here that we've got uh, the startings of simplex channels so DH1s we call them DH1, DH2, DH3 and they're all very simple uh, simplex channels and we always use talk group 9 in DMR world they're always talk group 9 as the contact and again, we've got our group list, which again relates back to our RX group list there is, is simplex. We always use color code one, always use repeater slot one, and always use talk group nine for our digital uh, six or seven channels. Uh, and I say six or seven, it is a bit contentious. Uh, there seems to be a lot of debate as to whether there are six or seven channels. Some websites tell you there are six, others tell you there are seven. Uh, but uh, these are the frequencies nonetheless. Okay, so we'll move down. We're going to look at GB7KM's programming now. So if we come down to uh, that, we can see it down here, GB7KM. And we're going to look at talk group one, first of all. Come back to us in video four as we go through the various different bits of channel information and explain what all the functions do within the channel information screen.